In Creo Parametric, you can use the Flexible Modeling extension to modify sheet metal geometry. To show you the power of that, I'm going to start off with Imported Geometry. Let's hit the Open button, and for my working directory, let me change my Type 2 step, and I'll bring in this particular step file. Let's bring it in automatic. Everything here looks good. I will click the OK button. And let's zoom into our part geometry. Let's convert this to a sheet metal part. I will go to the Operations Overflow menu, convert to sheet metal, and I'm going to query to the opposite side as the driving side. I get this warning here for converting it. It says that the specified value in the SMT thickness parameter is different than the detected thickness in the geometry. Do I want to use the parameter value or keep the model geometry? I want to keep the model geometry. And here it gives me a preview. Everything here looks good. Let's hit the check mark or middle mouse button. And now we have this as imported geometry in sheet metal mode. Here is the flexible modeling tab in sheet metal mo mode. And you'll notice it looks a little different than part mode. Let's take a look at an example of using a couple of these commands, specifically the move command and the pattern recognition commands. First off, let me start out over here and I decide that, hey, I want this surface to be longer. I can select it and then from the mini toolbar, here is the move command. And so then I can drag the geometry if I want to, but I prefer to select a motion reference like this surface here. And the advantage of doing that is I will get a dimension that I can control. And as I'm dragging this up over here, let's use a value of 0.25, you'll notice that it is extending, propagating the surfaces of the chamfer in there. Let's hit the check mark in middle mouse button. Let's say I didn't want that. Let's say I wanted the chamfers to remain their same length. Well, all that you have to do is select the chamfer surfaces as well. Let's select this, hold down the control key and grab the chamfer surfaces. Again, I will choose the move command from the mini toolbar. Let me select a motion reference. Again, I'm selecting the motion reference or the handle reference in order to get this dimension that I can modify. And you have a few different places that you can change it. You can do it in the graphics area, you can do it from the ribbon or from the tab itself. And here you can see the difference in the results by selecting the chamfer surfaces as well. Next up, let's take a look at some of these holes. When I import this, I say, hey, wait a second. These holes are way too close to the edges of the part. I'm violating the edge over distance recommended ratio. Let's grab these holes and move them inbound. I'm going to select one of the holes, and I'm going to start off from the mini toolbar using the shape selection tools. And right now, there we have the cut that we want. Let me go to this other hole over here, hold down the control key, and again, I'm going to use the mini toolbar to grab the cut associated with that. And one more time, hold down the control key, grab this surface, and then grab the cut. And so now I've got all of them selected. Let me right mouse click so I can get the move command. And let me grab a motion reference in here, and then drag them. I can say, hey, you know what, I want them to be, let's make them about 0.1 towards the inside of the part so that they are not so close to the edge. All right, let's take a look at one of the side tabs over here. And I decide that, hey, you know what, I don't want this to be the length that it currently is. So I can select a surface. And right now I just have the one surface selected. You have the ability to use geometry rules. And you, have, you can choose coplanar and or parallel. I will choose coplanar. You can see the other surfaces that highlight. That's what I want, so I will click the OK button. And then let's use Move from here. And for dragging this, let me select a motion reference once more, and then drag this out over here. You can see that it is ending up getting rid of the chamfer, but if I go in the other direction, the chamfer is being extended. Let's try a value of 0.04. 
That's good. Now let's hit the check mark and middle mouse button. For another one, oh, I've got a tab over here, and I decide that, hey, I want to move this whole entire tab. In order to select it, I can use box selection. I'm just swiping a box over it, and it highlights the tab over here. Then I can right click to get to the move command. And again, I can select a motion reference for dragging it. And I can drag it, and let's say I want it all the way over here. Let me drag it some more. And let's change this value here to value of 3. In addition to moving it, you have this option from the ribbon in order to create a copy of it. So I've got that whole tab over there. And I'll keep it there and then create the copy over on the other side over there. Uh, let's see, let's take a look at a couple other more tools. I've got a bunch of holes that are on the inside of the part, and I think that they might be similar. So I can start off by selecting one of these, and then let's use again the shape selection tool to recognize that as a cut. I'm going to zoom out and then use the pattern recognition tool, and it says, hey, you know what? These six can be part of a spatial pattern. So that's good for the pattern recognition. Let's hit the check mark. And then if I move one of them, I can propagate the move to the rest of them. So let's select this hole over here. Let me do the cut selection and then move. I'll pick this edge as a motion reference. And let's say I decide that I want to drag this over to the inside, maybe a value of 0.5. And then if I go to the Options tab, we can select to propagate to a Pattern Symmetry or Mirror feature. Let me select my Pattern Recognition feature over here. And now it's highlighting the other members of the pattern. Oops, that one that went out way too far. Let me change this value here to 0.25 just to prevent my holes from intersecting one another. That's good. Hit the check mark. And that way I have use pattern recognition in order to propagate that move of the hole to the other members of the pattern. All right, last one to take a look at for now. Here I have a bunch of forms in the model over here, and I want to move them. Let me swipe a box over the geometry for box select. And then I can use the geometry search tool and say, hey, see if there's anything similar to that one. When I hit the search tool, it highlights the other forms. And then I will use the select button over here. And then I can right click in order to, oh, not seeing the move command in there. That's OK. Let's use the move command from the ribbon and select a motion reference and then drag them out over here some distance. Let me use a value of 1.5. That's good for that direction. And then we can go to here and say, okay, we have that first move that is in here. Let's now do another handle placement. A lot of math going on in there. And then let me drag it out over here. Oh, by the way, it is taking a long time to update. What will help is if I go to the unattached preview over there, and it will be a lot faster than the regular attached preview. Let me drag it out over here. Looks like a value of three will be good. Now I won't be getting that slow behavior like I was. And just like I did with that other tab, I could use this button in order to create a copy of the forms over in the other part of the model. Now when I hit the check mark, it is going to do the attachment math and put them in there. So in that way, I was able to do the move with the copy on that form geometry that I box selected and then did a geometry search on it. So you can see in flexible modeling, there are a lot of different tools in here. We have the ability to pull walls and edit bends and edit bend relief. And I'll show those other commands in different videos. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creolewindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.